Kimberly. And I'm Catherine. We are the owners of Pilates on Fifth here in New York City. We've had our studio for almost 15 years now, and we offer private training on in Pilates and also in Cardiolates, Silk Suspension, and Coraline, and group classes as well. Yes. And we, in our 15 years, we've seen so many props come and go, and we actually love the Active Motion Bar. We were very excited when it came across our email, and we love the people involved in the company. It looks like a typical body bar, and it's not at all. And it's a great way to add dynamic stability to your Pilates lessons. So we're here to show you, the Pilates instructor, how you can use the Active Motion Bar in your Pilates sessions and maintain all the core concepts of Pilates with a fun new prop that spices the lesson up for your clients. So what is the Active Motion Bar? Well, first of all, it's a great way to get a core-centered challenge into any workout, but it's especially good for Pilates because we as Pilates instructors talk so much about the core and the powerhouse, yet we don't always integrate the limbs into how they affect the core. And this really helps because it's not just a body bar. Can you hear these? Let me hold it near the mic. <laughs> you can actually hear, hear the weighted, the weighted balls, balls, balls moving. So most of the time in Pilates, our goal will be not to hear that noise, <laughs> which is almost impossible to do. It's practically impossible to have absolutely no movement of the weighted balls inside because we're dynamic beings that are not perfect, mm -hmm. sadly. So in training ourselves, to listen to the weighted balls moving back and forth and then make adjustments, micro adjustments in our core, in our arms, in our limbs, we're getting much more of a workout than we otherwise would. So again, it looks like a typical body bar, but you can hear them. They make a big difference, a big wonderful difference in your workout. So you can use it just to maintain parallel or you use the balls to add dynamic stability to your workout as you move, they move. Mm -hmm. And they, they come in different weights. This is 4.5 pounds, which is shorter, but they also come in, what's it, six, six pounds, eight pounds, eight pounds, 10 pounds, 15, and 18. We will not be using the 18. Yes. <laughs> and for Pilates, the 4.5 pound bar, because it's also a foot shorter than the others, just really it's more manageable and it's just easier to use. And it's also safer for your clients who might have a little bit of shoulder girdle instability to begin with. We also find that with some of the easier Pilates exercises that are a little bit more difficult to grasp, the active motion bar actually drives the, those core concepts, yes. pun intended, yes. home, and that you can actually feel the smaller um, muscles working and you understand what the gist of the exercise is intended to be. So just to establish some credibility, we'd like to tell you about the science behind the active motion bar. The University of Michigan has recently completed a study whereby they compared the effects of the active motion bar across some fitness modalities, and particularly in which muscles were activated mm. and to what extent the muscles were activated across the exercise platforms. And what they found with all participants, young to old, fit to unfit, that with the muscle groups tested, the muscle activation was 173% more with the active motion bar compared to typical medicine balls or body bars. And that's pretty significant. Yeah, that's good. It's always nice to know that the workout you're doing is actually more efficient because you're using a prop and you're not just using a prop because it's there. <laughs> so, and that's the science. That's the science behind it. So, how do we use this? Let's start with some general cues. So, of course, you see that it says an active motion bar right in the middle, but off center, on each side, equidistance from center, are some white stripes. So, you always want to tell your client to hold where the white stripes are, or the white little bands. Um, sometimes you'll have an overhand grip, or sometimes you'll have an underhand grip. Wherever you're gripping, you want it right in the center. So, that's something that's very important, too. And as mentioned, there are two ways to use the bar. We'll, we'll either be keeping it parallel to the floor, trying to keep the weighted balls in the center of the active motion bar, or we'll be using it in side to side, lateral flexion, rotation exercises, so that we're using the momentum generated by the weighted balls and generated by the torso to challenge the stability and create more muscle firing. It makes your core brace, as they say. I know it's not a Pilates word to say core bracing, but it's a very, very, um, incredible fitness term when you feel your core go, oh, which means that it's kicked in to sort of support you. This really helps because when those weighted balls slide to one end, you can feel your obliques go and hold you, which is very important. So now let's learn some movements. 
Welcome to Active Motion Bar Mat Exercises. Exercise number one, we will do the half roll down. So Catherine will sit right up on her sit bones with a nice vertical pelvis, nice neutral pelvis, neutral spine, and place the bar in her hands with her hands on the little white marks out in front of her. Now the goal in this exercise is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So the minute you hear the weighted balls sliding back and forth, you know you need to make a micro adjustment in your positioning. So it's excellent feedback for the body. So inhale here. On the exhale, she'll engage her abdominal muscles and roll off her sit bones to flex the lumbar spine, keeping the shoulders down the neck long. Inhale to stay here, then exhale, maintain that full flexion so the C curve come up over the vertical pelvis, and then inhale, lengthen up to sit nice and tall. And we'll go again. Actually, she kept them very quiet. I'm impressed. <laughs> and exhale, roll back. I'll let you know when they roll. <laughs> and it was a roll back. Good. And then inhale to stay here, staying very level. And then exhale up and over the vertical pelvis and then lengthen up to sit tall. So as she goes again, now that you know the movement, I'll tell you some things we're looking for and what it means when the bar um, rolls side to side or you hear the weighted balls move. So go ahead and exhale, roll back. Usually if you hear the balls consistently rolling to one side, you know that you unconsciously are using your right obliques or your left obliques more. So then you know that you need to engage the opposite side a bit more to help stabilize and it helps you to work equally. And that is the half roll down with the active motion bar. This is active motion bar, mat exercise number two. We'll do the spine twist. Again, the goal here is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So Catherine will sit nice and tall on her sit bones with her legs outstretched, neutral pelvis, neutral spine. If hamstring flexibility prevents you from sitting this way, you can either bend the knees slightly, show that, <laughs> or sit up on a little cushion. So she'll go ahead and straighten her legs. And again, here we don't want to hear the weighted balls rolling back and forth, and the hands are on the little white marks. So she'll inhale to lengthen and sit tall. Let's move on an exhale today because of the weighted bar. So exhale, rotate to the left, and exhale, 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 and then inhale as you come through center. Yeah. And then exhale to the right. So it's like you're a barbershop pole. You're getting taller and taller each time. It's very easy when rotating. Just keep going. She's exhaling on the rotation. Very easy on rotation to let a shoulder dip and let lateral flexion enter the picture, which we don't want in pure rotation. So the active motion bar gives you that feedback and helps you know when you're doing the exercise right. Lovely. And another way we can do this is to slide the bar, you don't, you're not gonna hit me, behind the back under the scapula and hold it like so. And that also helps teach the movement coming from the torso and not from the arms at all. And we exhale to rotate and inhale back to center and then exhaling to the other side. And again, the pelvis and spine stay vertical. We're not having any lateral flexion and no lumbar flexion or thoracic flexion. And that is the spine twist with the active motion bar. Active motion bar exercises with the mat. This is exercise number three, the one leg circle. So Catherine will go ahead and lie supine. And the first thing we want her to do is find neutral pelvis, neutral spine, neutral pelvis being when the ASIS and the pubic bone are in the same plane. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand her the bar like this. <laughs> and she's going to hold it where the little white marks are. So she moved it so she could see them. And this is another exercise where our goal is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So you don't want to hear the weighted balls moving back and forth. So she'll draw her left leg up and reach it to the ceiling. And this is where we make small circles. It's about pelvic stability and torso stability, not about range of motion. So she'll inhale, cross the midline of the body, exhale to complete the circle. Inhale, cross, and I can tell by the gigantic grin on her face that she's having trouble keeping those weighted balls still. And do two more, four, and one more. Inhale, cross the midline, exhale, complete the circle, and we'll go the other way. Inhale away from the midline, and exhale, complete the circle. So again, since this is about stability of the torso, when you move your leg too much, you'll hear the weighted ball shift within the bar, and that's not good. So then you know you've gone too far. And then let's do a few on the other leg just to keep you equal. So inhale, draw the right leg in, and exhale, reach it up. Inhale, cross the midline of the body, exhale to complete the circle. Better, yeah, she's better on this side. <laughs> and inhale, cross the midline, exhale, complete the circle. Two more, yes, and one more. And then just to complete you, we'll go the other way. Inhale away from the midline and complete the circle. And again, this side is easier for her. I'm not hearing them shift back and forth. So you as the instructor can also guide your client into where they need to stabilize more if they need to engage left obliques or right obliques more to keep everything quiet. And that is the one leg circle with the active motion bar. 
his active motion bar exercises with the mat. This is exercise number four, the hundred. So Catherine will go ahead and lie supine. And before I give her the bar, we're going to go ahead and find the nice imprinted or supported position of the pelvis where your abdominals are engaged to bring slight flexion to the spine and you have the rib to hip connection. She'll pick one leg up into tabletop and then the other leg up into tabletop. That's the 90 degrees at the hip and the 90 degrees at the knee. Now, I'm gonna help you. Okay, okay I'm gonna try to get it more level before. We're gonna hold these between her little knees and ankles. Yes, so it's an inner thigh workout. You got it? Okay, good. So then we'll, it's not too close to your head, is it? Okay, good. <laughs> Inhale, lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, curl the head and shoulders off the mat. And here we go, we're not gonna do the full 100. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two. Now she'll keep counting. The goal here then is not to let the legs move, not to hear the balls sliding back and forth. Clearly, if you lift your legs too much, you're gonna have to lift your hands and catch it because it will slide into your head. Thighs. But it's great for the inner thighs. It's, it's just about to say, it's great for the inner thighs. And I think that's enough. So go ahead and let your head come down. And that is the active motion bar exercise with the hundreds. Active motion bar exercises on the mat. This is exercise number five, upper back strengthener. So this is kind of a hybrid of breaststroke and half swan, but since we have a bar now, obviously we can't do breaststroke. And um, so it's kind of a half swan with arms behind your back. So <laughs> upper back strengthener is the name. So I am going to give this to her. So what I'm gonna to try to do before I give it to her mm -hmm. is get the little weighted balls in the middle. Um, and she's gonna again hold where the um, little white marks are. So um, pelvis and spine are neutral, legs are squeezing together. Unless this hurts your lower back, you could separate the legs slightly. Shoulders are sliding down the back and rolling open. So we're gonna inhale, roll the shoulders open even more. Then exhale, roll, reach the bar, sorry, not roll, reach the ball towards the uh, bar towards the ankles and come up. Inhale to stay there and exhale, lowering down. And again, inhale. Exhale, reach the hands towards the ankles as you come up and then she can feel which one's sliding more. Yes, inhale to stay and coming down. And we'll just do two more. And again, the goal here is thoracic extension. So come up, you just wanna keep the bottom rib down. So we're not going into lumbar extension. So this is enough. Inhale to stay and coming down. And one more, <laughs> inhale, exhale, coming up, reaching the hands towards the heels. Inhale to stay and lowering down. And that is upper back strengthener with the active motion bar. Active motion bar series on the mat. This is exercise number six. We are doing the half roll down with obliques or obliques roll down. So Kimberly's going to sit nice and tall on her sit bones, pelvis nice and vertical. She already grabbed the active motion bar in the proper spots. Her knees are bent. So for the first version, we're going to keep the bar parallel to the floor so you don't want to hear the weighted balls rolling back and forth. So she's going to, as she rolls back off her sit bones, rotate to the left and keep everything nice. Ooh, I don't hear any movement, that's nice. And then inhale, arrive on the sit bones at the top of the movement. And she's doing a nice job of keeping her shoulder girdle stable as well. And that's why the 4.5 pound bar is nice for Pilates also, is because it's shorter and not as heavy as the other one so you can really work on that shoulder girdle stability. So now just to add a little pizzazz to this, when she rolls back to the left, she's actually going to tip the bar to the left as well. So now we are going to hear the weighted balls roll and then you get more of a work in the core because you're having to deal with that weight shift. And then she's going to go to the other side and just do one more each side. So now we're using the active motion bar and the movement of the weighted balls within the bar to create more intensity of the workout and of this exercise so the core has to engage even more. So now to add a little bit more difficulty, she, it starts the same way, but as she transitions, she's going to reach the bar overhead and I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> so she's going to roll down to the left, the balls slide to one side, more activation of the core. Now really challenging the shoulder girdle stability as the bar reaches overhead and then the other way, rolling down and then lifting up, she's keeping her abs nice and flat, nice and scoop, rolling down. And what also she's doing, she's doing a good job of managing that momentum, because the balls don't gradually roll down, they all go down at the same time, so you really have to make sure that your core is engaged to manage that. And so that was the obliques roll down with two variations included. Active motion bar exercise series on the mat. We'll do the roll up now. This is exercise number seven, the roll up. So Kimberly's going to, going to roll all the way back. So her legs are going to be adducted in parallel. And now she'll reach the bar overhead. I'm going to really suck in my abs just so <laughs> she can avoid me with that. Thank goodness we are using the shorter bar. And so now she'll inhale to reach the 
her arms to the ceiling, head and shoulders nod, and then rolling up here. And I did not hear the bar move, but this is one you want it to stay parallel as well. Now she'll inhale to start to roll back, and then exhale, everything rolls back. Quads engaged, keeping the bar nice and parallel to the floor. Beautifully done. And inhale. Now here's where you can also t test the stability of the rib cage. You only want to take the bar overhead as much as your ribs can stay stable. Do it wrong for one second. Yeah, so you don't want that to happen. So she's nice and stable here, and we'll do that one more time. Inhale. Bar reaches toward the ceiling, head and shoulders reach off the mat. Now one thing that's nice about the bar is the 4.5 pounds do make it a little bit easier to do the roll up and that's a good thing, that's never a bad thing. And rolling down and again, for, as far as biofeedback goes, you don't want to hear anything and that way you'll know you're using one side of your obliques a little bit more, but then you'll also be able to feel in your body that you have to make the little adjustment. Okay, I think that's plenty. Okay. Alrighty then, <laughs> I'll take this. That was the roll up with the active motion bar. active motion bar series for the mat. This is exercise number eight, the side kicks. So Kimberly is going to lie on her side, bring her torso to the edge of the mat, and then her legs will hinge forwards. You're making yourself a human check mark. And then we will place the bar on her side so she can hold it there herself. Now what is really nice in this exercise is normally when you're doing side kicks, the legs flying all over the place, and actually the purpose of the exercise is torso stability, but what we're gonna use it, the active motion bar here for is to make sure the leg stays parallel to the floor. So once she lifts that leg parallel to the floor, now we should not hear any movement of the weighted balls in the exercise, and here we go. So we'll inhale, inhale, the, arm, the leg comes forward, and then exhale, press the leg back only as far as torso stability can be maintained and keeping the leg a constant height. And Kimberly's doing a very nice job of doing this. Inhale and exhale back. So she's gonna do it wrong for a second. I'm gonna try to get close. If she lifts her leg too high, you'll hear all the balls roll to the hip, or you'll hear all the balls roll to the foot. So we're really trying to keep it nice and even so they're staying right in the center. And of course, it's extra work for the gluteus medius as well, and that's never a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I just knocked that. And oh, exhale, yes. pressing back. And we'll just do one more. Inhale, inhale. So it's nice and controlled. And really the goal of the exercise really is highlighted even more when you're using the active motion. Alrighty, that was exercise number eight, the side kicks. Active motion bar series for the mat. This is exercise number nine, side leg lifts. So Kimberly's going to lie on her side and from a bird's eye view, you're in one long line. And yeah, Kimberly, go ahead and press your, um, prop yourself up. You can do this with a long arm as well, but um, we're just gonna have her propped up now so you can see. And then she'll place her, the active motion bar, on the leg. And you wanna make sure that you don't get it too high up here, or actually it's not as much work. So you wanna make sure that it's going down. And think ankle, knee, and hip, greater trochanter in line. And so we'll just do a couple of each exercise. So the first, she's just gonna lift the top leg. We're going to eliminate the point and flex for balance purposes, and then coming down. We, the bar will just roll off if you try to point your foot. Exhale, lift, we'll just do an inhale to stay. So I don't know if you can hear it, but as she's lifting her leg, when she lifts the leg, all the weighted balls roll to the hip, challenging the balance in the coronal plane, and then when she brings her leg back down, the balls roll back. So this intensifies the exercise. Now to make this more difficult, once she's up there, she can lift the bottom leg to meet the top leg. She's probably gonna be really mad at me for, yes, good. And then bringing both legs down. So this makes the exercise much, much harder. And lift the leg up, lift the bottom leg to meet it, and lower down. Good, and just lift and lower. Excellent, and those are two side leg lift series exercises. Circles. Oh, circles, yes, excuse me. We can do circles here. Forward, nice and slow. Again, you're having the issue with the balls rolling toward the foot when the leg comes down towards the hip. When the leg lifts, cr increasing the difficulty of the exercise and really making the exercise, making the person doing the exercise realize <laughs> how much you have to stabilize in the core. Excellent. Wow. So that's our side leg lift series with the active motion bar. <laughs> Active motion bar series for the mat. This is exercise number 10, the teaser. Dun da da. So, Kimberly's going to lie back. The start position is similar to what we did for the roll up. I'm going to hand her the bar so she can see the white marks where to put her hands. Starting with the bar reaching overhead only as far as the stability in the rib cage can be maintained. So, she'll inhale, bar comes to the ceiling, head and shoulders lift off the mat. Exhale, lifting up, 
arms, legs reach, good. Inhale, reach the bar overhead only as much as you can stabilize, and exhale, rolling down. I don't think I have to explain how difficult this is, <laughs> but just in case, we are trying to keep the bar parallel to the floor, and you can really feel if you're using one side of your obliques more than the other. Even in this position, you can feel that. So she's gonna do one more. Now, the weight of the bar does change the center of gravity in the exercise, so it will either be a little bit easier or harder, but it definitely will be different and you need to get used to that. Inhale, arms reach overhead, smile, excellent, and then rolling down one vertebra with control. And that's what this challenge is as well, is the control. And actually, I didn't hear the weighted balls moving a lot at all, so. She's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. So that was um, teaser, and that was exercise number 10 in the active motion bar mat exercise series. motion bar series on the reformer. This is exercise number one, footwork, just a way to spice up your footwork. So Kimberly's going to lie back, and we're only going to show a couple of foot positions, but you can, needless to say, do this with any foot position on the reformer. So I'm gonna hand her the bar so that she can grab on the white spots, so it's a good position for the shoulder girdle. So now, as she extends her knees and presses her legs straight, she's going to press the bar up, pressing up, and then coming in. And what this does here, obviously we're keeping the bar parallel to the floor, so you don't want to hear um, the weighted balls sliding one side to the other. If someone has a little bit of natural rotation, they'll be able to feel that and then get the biofeedback to fix it. It also gets, gives the torso something to do. I think we've all worked with clients and when they're doing footwork, you can tell that nothing's going on in the torso and it's really supposed to be a more active exercise. And so this drive, the active motion bar in this exercise drives that point home. So go ahead and pick another foot position. Actually, no, let's do running. We'll do the, um, the lower and lift. This will make it a little bit more interesting. So she's going to press out with her um, arms straight. Now just drop one heel and then the other heel or drop both. Now this is one where people can wobble a lot. And if you start to wobble or one hip starts to lift, then you're really going to start hearing the movement and the bar will start moving from side to side. So this just teaches that the core, even in this exercise, which is relatively easy, you still want to engage it so that you can go on to more difficult exercises. And now she's adding a variation where you can lower and lift the heels and add an arm press at the same time. And you'll be able to see if one arm is stronger than the other, depending on whether the weighted ball shift from one side to the other. So that is reformer exercise number one, footwork with two variations thrown in as well. Active motion bar series for the reformer. This is exercise number two, the hundred. So we'll do the hundred much like we did on the in the mat series. She'll bring, first and foremost, she'll create a nice strong connection between the ribs and the hips, flattening the abs, slight flexion of the lumbar spine, bringing one leg up into tabletop, the other leg up into tabletop. So 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knee. We especially want 90 degrees at the knee because we are going to place the bar here. Do you have it? Yes. Okay. So, and this makes the adductors work a lot harder and also the abs have to work harder too because now you're holding up a 4.5 pound bar. Needless to say, we'll not be straightening the legs here. That would be a little bit dangerous. So she's going to inhale, lengthen the back of the neck, curling up, and then from here, inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. She's going to keep going, but you don't want to hear anything happening here. If she starts to lift her legs too high, the weighted balls will roll toward the face. That would actually be a little bit dangerous. So you want to make sure that you give this to someone who actually has the inner thigh strength and the coordination to do all of this at the same time. And you can go ahead and put your head back. And that is how you use the active motion bar with the 100 on the reformer. Active motion bar series for the reformer. This is exercise number three, posture series. Um, there are two ways actually to utilize the active motion bar in this series. One is like we did for the 100 where she had her legs in tabletop and we put the bar here. That is totally fine, makes it all about the inner thighs and of course the abs. But to make it a little bit more interesting and to show you a variation, you can also loop the active motion bar through and then you still, you want the straps holding the excuse me, the hands holding the straps and the bar at where those little white marks are. Here, and now she's going to reach one leg up into tabletop, then the other one, and from here, pressing down. So you might need to go into a slightly extended tabletop position. We call this long tabletop, just because. So the shins will still be parallel to the floor. And here, with the active motion bar, you get the feedback because you want the 
bar to stay parallel to the floor. If she starts pushing more with her left arm, the balls, the weighted balls will roll to the left side and vice versa. So that just creates a little bit more work with this exercise. You could also, just to spice things up, you could add reciprocal movement of the legs while this is happening here. And that just with holding the bar in one spot and that way it just adds a little bit of interesting feedback there because if the hips start to shift, the balls will roll to one side than the other. And then she can place one foot down and the other foot okay. down. Lovely. And that is the posture series with the active motion bar. Active motion bar series for the reformer. This is exercise number four, the seated arm and back series. We've gone ahead and shortened the straps a little bit just to make the exercise a little bit more functional and give appropriate range of motion. So we are going to slide the bar through the loops and they are each going to find the little white spot so they know so you know where to grip. She's going to start with her palms facing down, sitting nice and tall. You want to be about a palm's width away from the edge, no, no rolling off. The bar will stay parallel, or ideally the bar will stay parallel to the floor. And first she's just going to do simple rows. And so here, working the mid traps and the lower traps, and you don't want to hear any movement of the weighted balls inside the active motion bar. If she starts to pull a little bit more with one arm than the other one, then the bar will shift, and we don't want that. She can also do this in a flex position. So she's gonna roll off her sit bones, and here it's gonna be a little bit trickier because now you're dealing with oblique strength as well. So if one side's a little bit stronger, you tend to favor that side, the bar will definitely shift. So those are two exercises. We have two more for you. She's gonna roll up and now set the bar down and she'll change her grip. So now the palms will be facing up. And first we can do straight bicep curls here. Yes, and she's gonna switch the cross in her legs. Always very good to do that. And just working the biceps here. This is actually very <laughs> challenging and definitely, especially if you have one arm that's more dominant, you'll start to hear a little bit more movement and then even the doer knows, okay, if I'm feeling the balls roll to the right side, I need to do something more with my left arm and get everything going there. And the same thing can be done, rolled off the sit bone. She's keeping her elbows close to her rib cage, hollowing out the abs. She looks like she's having a great time. This is a lot of work, by the way, I can tell that. Excellent, and then roll, that last one, and then rolling up. And that is how we utilize the active motion bar in the seated arm and back series. Active motion bar series for the reformer. This is exercise number five, the seated arm and chest series. Again, we've shortened the straps. What we're going to do for ease is we're going to come forward. Oh, place the bar on your lap. Place the bar yeah. on your lap first, yeah, yeah, Keith. One strap finds one side, and then she can put the strap on the other side. You do have to give it a little bit of a tug, mm -hmm. and that's the safe way to get into that. We've tried a few things, and <laughs> this is the way to go. Um, once again, we want the bar to stay parallel to the floor, and first she's just going to do an air push-up. So extending the elbows and then coming back. So because you have the extra weight of the active motion bar, you have two things going on. First, you have to hold your core a lot more stable. Arms have to work a little bit harder. But then also, if you're favoring one arm or the other, you can hear, like I can hear that the, the weighted balls are struggling to stay in the middle. Right? Yes. Or I'm struggling. Or she's struggling to keep them in the middle would be the way. Yeah, they're not doing a thing. They're just doing what is, what's being their, the impetus is. So then from there, she, once her elbows are extended, she can now reach the arms overhead. And this is a lot of extra work. And you, again, you can feel that one side wants to shift. If you have any weakness, you might tend to favor one side or a coping mechanism such as lateral flexion. And then you're really going to feel the weighted balls shift from one side to the other. And you only want to lift your arms up as far as you can stabilize and then get them back down. So this makes the exercise much, much harder. And that was lovely. And then to come out of this, she'll just set the bar in her lap and then you can get the straps off that way. And that was was the seated arm and chest series with the active motion bar on the reformer. Okay, this is the active motion bar series of exercises for the reformer. Exercise six, we'll do hip rolls. So Catherine will go ahead and lie back with her heels up on the foot bar, sit bone distance apart, and um, we'll make sure she has a nice neutral pelvis and spine to begin. And what we'll do here is we'll place the bar right across her ASIS, and she'll place her hands on the white marks. And again, initially we're neutral. Now, we will always be neutral, but always in a different plane. So she will, don't do it yet, she will be lifting her hips, but laterally we should not be hearing any movement, which is the goal. So the weighted balls only roll right and left. There's no way they can roll this way, so they should stay still. Okay, 
So inhale to prepare. On the exhale, press into the heels and roll the pelvis up. So you want to flex the lumbar spine, then engage the glutes and hamstrings to come on up. And again, the bar is staying level across the hips. Take an inhale here, feeling the length out the knees. The next exhale, she'll press her legs straight and lower her body to one long line from heels to shoulders. And again, the bar stays parallel to the floor. And then exhale, to that was your inhale, sorry, inhale, lift the hips, shooting the knees out really far. And then exhale, press out to your one long line. Bar is still parallel to the floor, although in different planes every time. And then lifting up. And one more time, this gives great feedback. Keep going, this gives great feedback for the practitioner because now do tip the wrong way. If you're tilting your hips, one side of the glutes is stronger, one side is weaker, you will hear the weighted balls roll one way and the other. And so you, the practitioner, are like, oh, okay, I, gotta, I have to engage that side more. And now to finish, we'll keep the hips nice and high as you soften the throat, soften the sternum, roll through each vertebrae one by one to arrive at neutral, the bottom, and that is hip rolls. Active motion bar series of exercises on the reformer. This is exercise number seven. Hip rolls with a wave is what we decided to call it. So <laughs> Catherine will go ahead and lie back. Uh, heels on the foot bar, sit bone distance apart. Nice neutral pelvis and spine to begin with. We'll place the active motion bar across her hips with her hands holding at the white marks. Sorry, I moved the bar so now <laughs> get them level. So this will add a deliberate rotation of the pelvis so that we make sure we are in control of the weighted balls and then it allows you to use the special features of the active motion bars to train your obliques more. So inhales to begin, starts the same way, exhale, first engage the abdominals to roll the hip bones towards the ribs, then engage the glutes and hamstrings to roll on up. So before we press out, let's just practice the movement. She's now going to let her left hip dip a little bit and then, yep, almost all the way to the ground and then roll once she's down there. Oh, and then come back up, yep, come back up. And then she'll let her right hip dip a little bit and coming back up. So that's one way you're just doing right and left. So go down on the right again. And now I can roll down. No, but now we'll go right and come back up there, yep. And now go down on the right and come back up. Yes, and you're trying to time the, you can hear the weighted balls. You're trying to time the hit of the weighted balls with the time your lovely little gluteus maximus on that side hits, as opposed to them hitting first. <laughs> The other way to do this, go on up please. Um, the other way to do this is to do it as a roll, which is where we came up with a wave name. So she'll go down on the left. Once she's down there, she rolls to the right so the bar passes through parallel and then she comes up through the right. So it's almost like little circles. And then again, we'll go down on the left and then roll once you're down there, it rolls to the right and then up. And then of course you'd reverse that. But instead of her reversing that here, we'll show you how you can do this with the whole hip roll movement with the legs extending every time. So there are many ways to do this. You just have to pick one and go with it because you could be rolling when you're out or rolling when you're in. So we'll try to show you both ways. So let's start by engaging the abdominal muscles. You roll the hip bones up to meet the ribs and then roll the pelvis up using the glutes and hamstrings. So this time she's gonna press out nice and straight. We're gonna go nice and slow so this makes sense. Once she's out there, she's all neutral. She's gonna dip to one side, perfect. Now she's dipped to one side. She's gonna bend her knees and come in staying low. Once she's in, she's gonna roll to this side and, this, and then start to press up again and she's gonna achieve, keep going, achieve the plank here but she stayed low now come back to neutral lift the hips and come in yes another way we could do this is dip the hips when you're here and then press out low here roll to this side and then lift up when you're on one side and come in and then find neutral at the short range. So there are two ways to do that. I hope that makes sense. You can either be rolling when you're in or rolling when you're out and finding neutral when you're in or finding neutral when you're out. And that is exercise number seven, hip rolls with the wave with the active motion bar. Active motion bar series on the reformer. This is exercise number eight, round back on the short box. So Catherine will sit on the short box, pelvis and spine neutral, right up on her sit bones. And of course, feet are flexed under the little rope or strap, it's not a rope, <laughs> a rope would hurt. And she's, she will hold the bar on the white marks and reach her arms out in front of her. So she's nice and tall to start. I'm gonna come over here, <laughs> yes. Okay, so sit, sit forward just a bit more. Yep, nice and forward to start. So inhale here, on the exhale, roll back off the sit bones. So you really wanna flex that lumbar spine. Inhale, lift the bar overhead, keeping the shoulder girdle stable, yes. Now exhale up and over your imaginary beach ball. 
and rolling up. So I didn't say this at first, but I hope it was obvious. The goal here is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So you will know if you're using your right obliques or your left obliques more because you'll hear those little weighted balls slide to one side and you'll know that you need to fix that. So inhale, exhale, rolling back. Inhale, lift the arms. Yes, very nice. And then exhale up and over again, keeping everything level and rolling up. And let's do one more time. And exhale, rolling back. It's very hard to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So this is an exercise, keep going, Catherine, that becomes, quote, easy, unquote, after a while in Pilates repertoire. So adding the weighted bar, the active motion bar, helps you realize, oh, wow, there is more work to be found in the round back. Alrighty, and that is, again, the Reformer series with the active motion bar, round back. Active motion bar series on the Reformer, exercise nine, straight back on the short box. So start sitting nice and tall on the sit bones, pelvis and spine neutral. Goal of this exercise is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. So much harder than it sounds. So reach the bar overhead, makes old exercises new again. Inhale here, exhale hinging back, Good, inhale to stay, and then coming right back up, good. Inhale, and exhale, hinging back. Again, the back stays completely straight. There is a slight flexion of the neck so that you don't jeopardize the neck so she stays looking straight ahead. And one more time, so you'll know here if you're laterally flexing or rotating because you'll hear the weighted ball slide within the active motion bar. Very nice, and that is straight back with the active motion bar on the reformer. This is Active Motion Bar Series on the Reformer, exercise 10, twist with round back on the short box. So Catherine will sit nice and tall on her sit bones, neutral pelvis, neutral spine, reach the Active Motion Bar uh, overhead, yes. And we're going to start with a nice inhale, shoulder girdle stabilized, exhale, rolling back off the sit bones, flexing the spine, lowering the bar. Now inhale, reach the bar back overhead, yes. Now exhale, we do want to twist to the left, but no lateral flexion, just rotation. And inhale, back center, nice. And then exhale, rotating to the right, no lateral flexion. <laughs> inhale, back center. And then exhale, up and over your imaginary beach ball and lengthening up to sit tall. So the weighted balls within the active motion bar really let you know if you've snuck in some you know, lateral flexion into your twist with round back. So again, keeping the bar parallel to the floor, extremely challenging, and the weighted balls within the active motion bar give you the feedback you need to know if you're doing it right. So let's do it one more time. Arms are overhead, inhale. Exhale, roll back off the sit bone, flexing the lumbar spine, lowering the bar. Inhale, reach the arms back overhead, keeping the bar level. And exhale, rotate to the left, good. And inhale, back center. And then exhale, rotate right. Very easy to lateral flex here, very hard not to. And then exhale up and over your imaginary beach ball. Good, and inhale, lengthen up to sit nice and tall. Lovely. And that is twist with round back on the short box with the active motion bar. Active motion bar series on the reformer. This is exercise number 11, side splits. And we have many variations within this exercise number 11, so it ends up being 12, 13, and 14 too. <laughs> anyway, Catherine's gonna demonstrate how you get on by yourself with the active motion bar because they are heavy so you should be careful. So you place it on the floor almost like a walking stick mm -hmm. and that way she places one foot up onto the non-moving surface and then places the foot on the moving surface. As you know with Pilates exercises on the reformer the spring resistance dictates what muscles are working. For now we've chosen two springs so she'll be working abduction. You could easily drop the springs and work adduction but pick your poison, whichever one you want to do. So then she'll carefully pick up the bar and hold at the white marks and hold the bar in front of her. So first of all, <laughs> we'll just do regular abduction. And again, the goal is to keep the bar parallel to the floor. Don't want to hear those weighted balls moving back and forth, pressing out. So keep going. This is a good exercise for clients who you know are pushing into one hip or the other to move the carriage. And the minute you do that, the torso reflects the movements of the hips and you'll hear the weighted balls move within the active motion bar. So it can be great feedback. Alrighty, we already mentioned that you could drop the springs and make this adduction. We don't need to show you that, it's the exact same motion. Let's add a little rotation. Okay. So as you press out, you're going to rotate one way, whichever way you want, yep, and inhale back center. And then exhale, press out, rotate the other way, good and inhale back center. So that just adds a little, um, obviously, challenge to the 
regular exercise, you're trying to keep your pelvis facing forward, meaning square. Your rib cage is rotating on the pelvis. Arms are reflecting the movement of the rib cage. Arms are not moving on their own. Alrighty. Then there are two ways we could do lateral flexion. This way is awfully challenging, so let's just put the. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can hold the bar right at your waist or your rib cage, and that way, as you press out, you can laterally flex to one side and then coming back and laterally flex the other. <laughs> as the client gets better at this, you could then bring the bar to the shoulders yeah, and add our lateral flexion here. With the ultimate goal, if Catherine's feeling like she can do it today, of having the bar overhead. But again, you're standing on a moving surface, so this is not something we'd say, yeah, do that first. So if you're going to introduce this, start with it low, bring it to the shoulders, and then slowly ratchet it up. Lovely. And then lastly, hold the bar out in front of you. This is a variation of an exercise called picking flowers that has lots of choreography, which can't be done with a bar. So she presses out, she's just gonna do a short, a short range, meaning flat back over. And flat back over, keeping the carriage still. And coming up. Not many people can go that far, but if you can, knock yourself out. And go that far, and come out. So the movement goes, you press out. Hold the carriage still, flat back over. Yes, don't move the carriage as you flat back over. Inhale, coming up. Or you could sneak an inhale down there and exhale, come up and come in. Very nice. And then to get down, she'll put her little gondola pole back on the active motion bar, of course, <laughs> but use it as a support to safely stuff off. And that is the active motion bar series on the Reformer Exercise 11 Plus Side Splits. <laughs>